Hi everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and today I'm building a 3D printed rocket. Now I'm fairly new to 3D printing, I've been playing with it for about a year and just like when I got into model rocketry many many years ago the easiest way to learn this was to first build kits or in this case build models that someone else has designed and then once you get the hang of what needs to go into a good kit you can start designing your own and that's kind of where I am as well so I did not design this the credits for the rocket are in the end credits of the video and they'll also be in the information below now my reason for this particular rocket um, has to do with my two-year-old grandson. He wanted to be able to touch the rockets and carry them and such, um, but I didn't want him falling on one and crushing a body tube or something like that. And rockets have lots of small parts that children can easily put in their mouth and swallow. So this isn't completely child-proof, and I wouldn't leave a child alone with it. But it is child resistant and they can carry it to the launch pad or fly it around if they want, given adult supervision. Uh, basically this has four pieces to it, um, although the uh, print file has some options as well. Uh, we've got a fin can here and there are multiple options on this. And then an extension tube that you can get with or without a launch lug integral to it. Um, same thing with the fin can. You can get this with or without the launch lug. And you can basically make this rocket as tall as you want by making as many of these sections that you need. Okay. Now this is meant to fit in here. Now all by itself it's tight. And we're going to come back and do some sanding here. Okay. And then we've got the nose cone. And this comes in two pieces. So you've got the basic nose cone here with a very flat surface. And then this is the nose cone shoulder. Uh, it has built into it some fairly thick loops here for your shock cord and parachute. And you notice that both of these have a hole in the center. And you can use this to put a wood screw through or a screw eye through to hold them together. Alright, so the first thing we're going to have to do is some sanding to get these parts to go together. Here I'm using 100 grit sandpaper to sand down the shoulder of the center body tube piece here. And so I'm just wrapping this around and rotating it. And I'm trying to be careful not to actually get up here on the top surface uh, because since I am making this for a small child, I don't plan to paint this. And so I want to leave the finish as unmarred as I can. Here I've sanded away quite a bit of the shoulder here, and then I've also sanded some inside, though not as much. Okay, um, and then one of the things you can do is as you're sanding, um, you can rinse or wipe this with a small amount of alcohol or with water, and that'll just help remove the buildup of little plastic particles there. Okay, so this is. Pretty much done. It's really tight, so I'm not going to put it all the way down there quite yet. Okay. Um, I also want to do the same thing now with the base of the nose cone. So again, this is going to attach like this, and this will go in here. And like the shoulder of the body tube, this also is going to need some sanding with 100 grit sandpaper. Now, as much as I just know you guys love to watch me sand, I'm going to do this part off camera. So here I have partially sanded the shoulder, and um, what you do next is going to be determined by how you want this rocket to come apart. Okay, so um, built into the fin can is a motor mount there. And here and here, these two are both the um, engine block and the shock cord anchor mount. And they suggest using Kevlar for this. Okay. Um, and then up in here, your Kevlar would attach either to these loops or you can put a screw eye in this hole. Okay. And then you can either have the nose pop out with the ejection system or you can have this break in half. 
okay, so that it comes out this way. Um, whichever way you do it, you're going to need to put the shock cord on first, run it up through here, and then on to the nose cone. I'm going to make mine um, nose ejection. And in order to make the rest of the sanding on this a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and attach the shoulder to the nose cone. So I've got a bigger handle out here. Uh, my fingers are not as small as they once were. Okay. Uh, but if you're going to do this part as the ejection break open point, you're going to make, need to make sure that it's sanded well enough that it will be able to be removed by the ejection charge. As I have this, it would not. I've got this sanded enough just to go together. Okay, so I'm going to make up some epoxy here. I'm going to use five minute epoxy simply because I'm used to doing it. Um, if you're fairly new to using epoxy, I recommend using a 15 or a 30 minute epoxy because you'll have more working time. All right, and I'm also going to get some Kevlar stock board here. I'm using 100 pound test um, because uh, this is a fairly dense rocket but at this size it's not too heavy yet. All right, and I'm going to give myself a good meter here at least of shock cord. Now if you're going to have multiple body tube sections you might want to use a little bit heavier shock cord. All right, here I just quickly measured out four feet. So that by the time I get done I'll have a meter of separation there at least. All right, and I'm going to go ahead here and use some super glue here to prevent fraying on the tips. Just like that. All right, I'm going to hit that with just a little bit of alcohol there so it cures quickly. Okay, now the tricky part is getting it through here. So I'm going to, I need to feed this through the first one from the outside. And it's going to want to try and go down further into there, and that's not where I want it. All right, let me use a pair of tweezers here to feed that through. And then pick it up here. All right, and now I'm just going to tie a couple of half hitches into this. Okay, and just pull that, that down as far as it'll go. And then once again, I'm going to use a little bit of super glue here to lock that knot into place. All right, so that's one end. Okay, now, um, to keep this out of my way for the moment, I'm going to feed the other end of the shock cord down through the motor mount here. All right, that'll keep it out of the way. Now, when I put this together, uh, I'm going to have a thin film of epoxy here, really not much at all. Uh, and then I'm going to put a blob of epoxy right in the hole there. And it may or may not squirt up. But I'll put another blob there. And then this screw eye, I will thread through the whole thing. All right now, it's not biting very much. And if you want a, an even stronger joint, um, get a bigger screw eye. Uh, but this is just going to be mainly a center anchor. So it's not going back and forth like this. Rather than a structural point. Um, I will run the cord through it, but it's, it's actually going to go through all three of them here. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and make up my epoxy here. And I've had several people ask me about these trays. These are weigh boats that are used mainly for chemistry. Um, weighing out small objects. You can get them on Amazon. Just look up weigh boat way as in to weigh something. All right, and I'm just going to mix this together here until it is uniform. Right, 
and basically I've got five minutes now to get this in place the way I want it. All right, so I'm going to start over here, and we're just going to make a thin film of epoxy here across the surface of the nose cone shoulder. All right, I'm not going all the way out to the edges because some of this is going to squirt out. All right, same thing here. Again, not going out to the edges. A little bit in the hole right there. Okay, and now I'll put these two together. And now my screw eye, I'm going to put just a little bit more epoxy on it. All right, I'll stick that down in there and screw it in. Right, and I want it to be going in the same direction as the other holes in the nose cone there already. All right, make sure that everything is even all the way around. Okay, that one's done. I'm just going to let that set aside to harden. Okay, and then for this part, I'm just going to run this right inside the fin can. Now you may be asking yourself, could I use super glue on this? Yes, but um, you'll need to sand it more. What can happen if you've got already a very tight fit and you put super glue on that is it may grab immediately and you may not be able to get the piece to seat all the way down. Okay, then for this part I'm going to need to make sure I'm aligned up here. So you can use a piece of um, launch rod, which is basically what this is. It's just a piece of aluminum I have handy. Okay, so you can use that to make sure that everything's lined up. And now we're just going to push that in all the way. Okay, and it's a little bit out of line. I can just give it a little bit of a twist there. And go ahead and sight down it. Twist it back just a hair. There we go. Alright, pull that back out. Okay. Do kind of a gun sight line up here. Alright, and I will set that aside for a few minutes to allow the epoxy to harden as well. Alright, I've finished sanding the shoulder here after the epoxy is uh, cured. And then I also sanded a little bit inside the body tube there. And so now these come apart fairly easily, which is what we want. Um, and it's better actually for these ones to come apart too easily, because we can always add a little masking tape to that. But if they're too sticky, we could have an ejection system failure. Alright, now I'm going to take my shock cord and run it back up through the motor mount and the rest of the rocket there. There we go. Alright, so it's still in place where it should be there. Okay. So here, um, we could just run it through all three of those eyelets and here again tweezers help a lot once we have it through all the eyelets we'll simply tie another couple of half hitches here okay pull those nice and tight and once again go ahead and add just a little touch of super glue to lock that knot in place. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of alcohol to harden that quickly. All right now, for your recovery system, um, you can use either a really big streamer or a parachute. Um, here I've got just a 12 inch. Estes parachute and you can just clip this in 
to that center um, screw eye that we put in there or you can clip it into the shock cord itself if you didn't do this part and just used a screw or even just left it open. Okay, <clears throat> And then this afterward just launches like a regular rocket. Okay, So you'll need some wadding in there and a motor down here. Now note this does not have um, a, re or a uh, engine retaining clip or anything like that. It does leave two holes here and if you want to you could use a, um, a screw with a washer on it that you could screw down there and that would hold the motor in place. Um, or you can just use friction fit which is what I'm going to do for now. I may come back later and, and put a, a true retainer in there. Okay, um, But that's pretty much it. Now you can decorate this. Um, if you want to paint it uh, unless you like the painted uh, print lines in there, um, what I would recommend is giving this whole thing a fairly good sanding with uh, 150 followed by 220 grit sandpaper and then um, prime it with a filling sandable primer. Okay, and with that type of treatment you can get it to the point where you have a smooth enough finish that when you paint it it'll look like a regular rocket. All right. um, as I said before, I'm making this for my grandson, and I really don't want to have to worry about him chewing on the paint and things like this. So what I'm going to do is just put a couple of stickers on here and maybe a vinyl wrap, um, and that will give it some, some nice decoration, but won't be things that I'll have to worry about toxicity and such. Um, you may have some little strings hanging on here. And um, if you're not going to paint this, I would just take a, a fingernail or a thumbnail and just scrape those off. So here's my finished rocket. Uh, I just used a vinyl wrap here that has little polka dots on it. And that gave it a, a nice breakup of the color. Uh, and this is supposed to be permanent vinyl, so it's not going to come off easily. Um, the little dinosaur themed stickers here I got at Hobby Lobby. And they uh, actually stick surprisingly well. I thought I might, I might need to end up gluing them or something uh, because of the rough surface of the, the printed rocket here. Um, but they've actually stayed on really well. And we did launch this rocket just using a friction fit type of motor mount. Um, I wouldn't launch it on anything smaller than a B. Uh, an A is just not going to have enough oomph to get this up high enough. Um, on the finished model, it was a really windy day. Um, I ended up doing something a little bit different here. So I cut the shock cord and then put in this heavy duty um, polyester ribbon as part of the shock cord. Okay, So it's got a small shock cord here going into the rocket and then you've got the big ribbon here. Okay, And then uh, the rest of the Kevlar coming up to the nose cone. And we launched it just with this because it was so windy, but you could also go ahead and put the parachute back on here, and this would act just like a long shock cord, but also give you a lot more color to it. Okay, um, I'll, show, I'll show a video of the launch here just after I get done talking, and I hope you have a, a great time building this rocket, have a great launch and a safe recovery, and please stay tuned for more of my videos. All right, go ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. Push the button. There it goes. There it goes, rocket. There it went.